Amen, 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 amen. Um, I give thanks to the Almighty God for this opportunity to share the word of life on this altar, on this great altar, this glorious altar. And I want to thank my father, daddy. I want to appreciate you for the opportunity that you have given unto me to share the word of life today. Thank you very much, mommy. Thank you. Thank you for always being there for us in the UK. Thank you for always being there for us as a family. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. To, uh, this evening, I'll be sharing on the title, The New Beginning by the Blood. New Beginning by the Blood. Amen. Now, one of the things that the devil hates so much is the issue of the blood and the cross. Um, obviously, the cross has always been so much of uh, contention um, with the enemy, with the devil, uh, with the world, and there's been all manner of, of, of attacks. Whatever it is, the fact is that it's, a, it's true that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary and he died for each one of us. Praise God. On the cross of Calvary, the key thing that did happen, there was a shedding of his blood. Amen. He's dying on the cross of Calvary. And that is where the power lies in. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18. The Bible says that the, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen. It is the power of God. And so tonight we're, we're looking at a new beginning by the blood. Or a new beginning by the power of God. Amen. A new beginning by the blood. Praise the Lord. Um, thank God for... The words that have been shared, I've, I've listened to, I've been part of the meeting from the beginning. And I, I want to really thank God for uh, the messages from our bishops and the messages from our senior ministers. I give thanks to the almighty God for um, every one of, of, the, of the messages. Praise God. Tonight I want you to open your heart and I believe that God would speak to you afresh in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, as we go into your word, I pray that you would give understanding unto everyone in the name of Jesus. You will give insight and reveal yourself in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, I ask that you take over my tongue and speak through me this evening in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we look at the scriptures, when we're looking at the blood in particular, we see so many appearance of the blood in the Bible. Uh, right from the book of Genesis, we begin to see the appearance of the blood. There are instances that the Bible didn't write it specifically that there was blood you know, that occurred there or blood was shed there or something, you know, brought forth the blood. But we could see it that there was a, an occurrence of the blood. Uh, Bishop Ojo was sharing with us yesterday from the book of Genesis, you know, where uh, God used, you know, the, the, the skin of a, an animal to cover, you know, the, the, to, to cover Adam and, and Eve. Praise the Lord. Um, we, there, it was obvious that the blood was shed. The blood of an animal was shed. And when the blood was shed, it made a new beginning for Adam and Eve. They were able to start afresh with God. You know, the sins that they had was covered. At that time, it was covering. You know, it was covered. It was taken care of by the blood that was, was shed, by the animal, blood of the animal that was shed. Praise the Lord. Also, when we begin to go in the book of Genesis, we go, we get to Genesis chapter 8, where 
we read of the story of Noah, where Noah uh, uh, had, had, had been in the ship, in, in the boat for 40 days and, and 40 nights. And uh, it came to a time that God remembered Noah. You know, Genesis chapter 8, verse 1. God remembered Noah. And when Noah uh, eventually was able to get himself to the, to the land, the very first thing that Noah did was to set up a place of sacrifice. He built an altar. Amen. You know, at that point in time, it's, it's a very interesting one. Uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Genesis chapter 8, verse, verse 20. The, the Bible says, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20, it says, And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offering on the altar. Praise the Lord. He offered burnt offering on the altar. But look at verse 21 and see what happened there. For him to have offered the burnt offering, he would have killed some of the animals. He, he would definitely have shed some blood. The Bible says in verse 21, it says, And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smith any more everything living as I have done. My goodness. Praise the Lord. When God smelled, when, when, when the blood came onto the floor, when the animals were burnt and God smelled it, God made proclamations. Praise the Lord. God was touched. He began something new in the generation of human beings on the surface of the earth. A blood, the blood of, an, of animals were shed and something began, something new began, you know, in the whole earth. Praise the Lord. And at that time, God said, I will never again do it, what I have done before. Amen. Praise God. Then we move on to the book of Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, we, we see there, you know, the, it, 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 I would call it the feast of the blood. Amen. I think probably one other case was probably more bloodier, you know, in the scripture than this. But in Genesis 15, verse, verse, eight, verse 18, Genesis 15, verse 18, we see God there establishing the, 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 the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, you know, and it was an issue, an, an issue of blood all over. Praise the Lord. In, in this situation, God told Abraham, you know, to pick animals, I think three of them, you know, and he said that he should slit it completely. He had to cut it completely, cut it, you know, into, into halves. And he said one half of, on the other side, one half on, the, on, on another side. You know, it was an issue of blood. There is something unique about, about blood. There is something in, in, in blood that makes God, if I, if I can put it this way, that makes God to tick. And when God ticks, when he sees the blood, something new begins, you know, in the life. For Abrahamic covenant, there were some proclamations that were make, made there. That was heavy. You know, he, 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 he did, God did not just see the blood and just looked over it. But when he saw the blood, the Bible says in verse, let me see, verse, verse 18. He says, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, unto thy seed have I given this land. From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Ephratites. You know, when God saw the blood, when God saw the sacrifice that was made, he made and he established the covenant with Abraham and he began something new. God will begin something new in your life uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he established a covenant with him that was based on the blood. 
and he began something new in, in his life. In fact, it was in that same scripture that God made a pronunciation about the 430 years that the children were going to spend, uh, you know, in, in Egypt. Praise the Lord. And then afterwards, he said he was going to give them, you know, their own land. When we leave that and go to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, we've, 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 I believe that most of us have heard of, heard of this story, obviously. You know, the children of Israel going through the tough and the difficult time in the land of Egypt. But God wanted to give unto them a new beginning. God wanted them to start something fresh. God wanted them, God wanted to do something new in their lives. And what did God do? God made them to kill again, to shed blood, to put blood upon the ground. Praise the Lord. When the blood came upon the ground, he said they should touch the blood and put the blood upon the doorpost and upon their lintel. And he shielded them, you know, and killed the firstborn, you know, of, of the Egyptians. But the following day, what happened? He gave unto them a new beginning. They began a journey into the, 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 the plan and the purpose of God for their life. They began a journey into what God had pronounced to, to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. A new beginning. The Lord is giving you a new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is giving you a new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, they went through the land and they did not believe God. They did not trust God. They did not, they did not do what God wanted them to do. When they were to enter into the land, they did not enter into it because of their unbelief. They could not see what God was doing in, on their behalf. And so the journey was extended for another 40 years. And by the time they were now going to enter into this promise, into this promised land, in the book of Joshua chapter 5 verse 9. Joshua chapter 5 verse 9. We see God bringing it on again the issue of the blood. Praise the Lord. God bringing in the issue of the covenant. The blood covenant that he made with them. The Bible says, Joshua chapter 5 verse 9 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gil unto this day. What happened to them? The Bible made us to understand that it made them to circumcise themselves. When they left the land of Egypt, all the people that left initially were circumcised, but by the time they they, 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 they went 40 years. It was a new generation. These people had not experienced God. They were not circumcised. At this point in time, before they could have the new beginning in their lives, God made them again to circumcise for them to have a new beginning. The Lord will roll away. Every of the Egyptians... Uh, 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 Every, every, of the, every of the reproach of the Egyptians uh, over your life uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord will give unto you a new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Something new will break forth over, over your life uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the blood is powerful. The blood is mysterious. The blood is, 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 is something that you cannot fully understand, uh, but it is something so unique to God. You know, many times I remember the story of Solomon. Many times when we remember, we just say, oh, he killed a thousand rams. He killed a thousand goats. You know, but what? Well, you know what happened? It must have been a serious flow of blood. And God would have looked at this blood that was sacrificed, that was flowing, and he would have said, wow, my son sacrificed this much for me. This much of blood, this much of blood is flowing. Wow, that is what my son has done. What what is it that you want, my son? I can hear it now. I can see it now. The Lord is saying unto you, what is it that you want me to do in your life? Something new God wants to bring forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that as we are approaching 2021, something new is breaking forth. Something glorious is breaking forth over our lives. God wants to give unto us a new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. 
We see from the New Testament that the blood of rams and the blood of goats were just a shadow of what we are, of where God was going. The intention of God was actually the issue of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was not something that he just did coincidentally. It was something that he had planned, he had proposed. God wanted to, God want God was was going to or where God was going to was concerning the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ you know and the bible makes us to understand in the book of hebrews that Jesus Christ's blood was much much better than the blood of blood of goats and the blood of rams praise the lord we are in a new dispensation. We are not dealing with the blood of goats or the blood of rams again. We are dealing with the blood of Jesus. And you know something? The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ works much, much better than the blood of goats and the rams. The blood of goats and rams we see brought people into new beginnings. How much more the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the very first things that he does that he takes you away from from this kingdom of darkness and puts you in the kingdom of his dear son. It gives you a new beginning. It gives, it makes your life a new beginning. He does something new in your life. Uh, there is a new beginning that, that comes on to your life uh, when you take on the blood of Jesus. Uh, when you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says in the book of in the book of John chapter John chapter John chapter 6. Praise the Lord. Uh, John chapter 6 verse 53. John chapter 6 verse 53. The Bible says of the blood of Jesus. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Brethren, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is a much better blood. Better than the blood of God and the blood of rams. The blood of Jesus Christ gives life. Amen. Today, the God of heavens will give you new life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in every area and every aspect of your life that there have been deadness life is coming today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ a new beginning is coming unto you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ something new is breaking forth over your life today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ oh brethren will say hey drink the blood you know when I first read this scripture I was thinking hey drink the blood of the blood of the drink the blood of, of Jesus Christ. How would I drink this blood? You know, one of the very first things that quickly come to mind, you know, is when you talk of people in the evil world today, they will say they've made covenant and they drank blood. <laughs> I don't know how many of us have heard of things called vampires. Vampires drink blood to live. Amen. Brethren. Jesus Christ has died on the cross of Calvary for us to drink his blood. He has said in his word that we should eat his flesh and drink his blood. And when we do this, we will have new life. We will have new beginnings. Not only just for us to be saved, but continually in our lives. As we keep on drinking the blood, drinking the blood, drinking the blood, newness of life will begin to come unto us. New beginnings will begin to break forth in our lives uh, on a daily basis uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, brethren, I want you to know God wants you to drink his blood. Jesus Christ wants you to drink his blood. Something new will break forth. What does it mean to drink the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, I believe that you know, this means that God is calling you onto a higher relationship in him, onto a higher state in him, onto a higher level in, in relating with him, believing and trusting that the blood of the lamb can, do, can bring forth a new life in your life. I want, you, I want to believe that this, this drinking of the blood is not just a physical drinking. Yes, you can have a physical drinking when we... When we when we break the bread and, and the wine, amen, which the Bible says we should do in remembrance of him. We should do it always, amen. And, and when, when Jesus Christ was, 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 was living, he left that with us, uh, that continuously we should do it in the remembrance of him. But the key thing now is that we need to believe. You can
can be drinking that blood and eating that bread on a daily basis, but when you don't trust in that blood, when you don't trust and don't believe in that blood, it does not work for you. Amen. I want you to trust in that which the blood can do. The blood can bring a new beginning. All you need to do is to look at the shadow. Look at the shadow. Look at what was done before. Look at how the blood delivered the children of Israel and brought them out of a bondage of 400 years. How he, 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 he delivered them from, from, from being servants. He gave them a new beginning. How the blood gave the children of Israel a new beginning and they enter into the promises of God for their lives. I believe that 2021 you are entering into your promise. You are entering into your new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the blood of the lamp, you are entering into your new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we drink this blood? As I said, there is a need for a deeper, a higher relationship with God. You know, there is a need for a covenant relationship with God. In Genesis chapter 15, what we saw God did there with Abraham was established a covenant relationship with Abraham. Praise the Lord. A covenant relationship. A covenant relationship by the blood. A covenant relationship by the blood of Jesus. There is a need for us to have an understanding of what this blood does and relate to God by this blood. Relate to Jesus by this blood. And as we do that, you discover that on a daily basis, you will begin to have a new beginning by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I know I don't have much time, you know, to, to, to keep going on with this. But I, if this is all that you would take today, I want you to know that the blood of the Lord Jesus gives you a new beginning. A new beginning. And as we go into 2021, you will have a new beginning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Shall we bow down our heads to pray? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word of life. We thank you for the new beginning that you are having for us. Oh, Lord, we thank you. The blood not only cleanses us, the blood not only sanctifies us, the blood not only takes our sins away, but it gives us life. It gives us a new beginning. Father, we receive this life. We believe in all that the blood has done for us on the cross of Calvary. The healing that has taken place, the deliverances that has taken place on the cross of Calvary. The substitution that took place on the cross of Calvary. We trust in this. We believe this, Father. We accept it, Father. Oh, Lord God of heavens, we pray that this that the blood has done will begin to be effective in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you because all the, Egypt, the, 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 the reproach of Egypt is removed from our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because we are entering into a newness of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen and amen. I want to say thank you again, Daddy. I appreciate the opportunity to to share the word of life. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.